Hey guys, welcome to Aptera Owners Club. Um, I wanted to do this video to talk about the top eight reasons that um, I ordered an Aptera. So number one is efficiency. So I'm, I personally actually just ride a bike to work every day. And I believe that you should use the least amount of resources to accomplish the job that you want to do and mainly to transport myself a bicycle is probably the most efficient thing um, but sometimes you know you just can't ride a bicycle for 100 200 miles and and I think it's kind of ridiculous to drive a like four or five thousand pound vehicle to transport a 170 pound person um, so Aptera is built purely for efficiency um, that's what they um, designed it for, and that's what I like about it. Like everything else is secondary to it. It's just the most efficient car that you can um, buy. Um, and in terms of like watt hours per mile, so like a Tesla Model S is probably about 320, 340 watt hours per mile. A Model 3 is probably like 280 watt hours per mile, 270 watt hours per mile. The Aptera is about 100 watt hours per mile. So it's three times as efficient, which means for the same amount of electricity, same size battery pack, you're going to go about three times as far. So I'll let um, uh, Chris Anthony and Steve Fambro discuss it a little more. Our ethos is start with the equation of efficiency. Um, what is it that uses so much energy to go from point A to point B in an internal combustion engine car? Uh, well, the first thing is, you know, 60% of your fuel is wasted uh, just for aerodynamic reasons. So make it very aerodynamic and you instantly get 60% better fuel economy. Oh, now internal combustion engines are horrible at converting their fuel source into actual power to the road push electrons. Now you've got an electric powertrain. Instantly get uh, much greater efficiency right there. Uh, then you got to decrease rolling resistance. So you got to make the vehicle lightweight. Um, so what you end up with when you solve that equation is something that looks like this. Something that's very aerodynamic uh, and lightweight and has a super efficient powertrain. We don't think that anybody else in the electric vehicle industry is trying to solve the equation for efficiency. They're trying to solve the equation for other purposes which is great. We love to see camping capable electric vehicles. We love to see uh, electric trucks that can, that can power uh, work sites uh, for two days. Um, you know, we love to see really comfortable electric vehicles so people can, you know, ride around in style. Um, we love seeing zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds, which is just nuts. Um, so we, we love seeing all the other attributes that are being brought forth in the electric vehicle industry, but that's not us. We're designing a vehicle for efficiency. We didn't start with the marketing group. We didn't start with the segment that we were trying to hit. We started with the equation for efficiency. We built this, crossed our fingers and hoped that people would like what we're doing <laughs> and would support the project. And now we have over 11,000 people that have orders for our product. You know, the, the side view mirrors on an F-150 pickup truck have more aerodynamic drag than the whole Aptera. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's quite fascinating when you think of just how poorly most modern vehicles today perform aerodynamically. And it's not, it's not a one-time thing. Anytime we change anything in the airstream, you know, we have to validate it again that it hasn't changed the flow and hasn't increased the drag. So it's, it's a core competency of our company, and it's something that... It is happening on an ongoing basis uh, to evaluate different configurations of mirrors, wheel pants, tire tread, how that affects, uh, placement of the A-arm covers. Every time we contemplate changing one of those things, we need to make sure it doesn't break the model. There's a lot of work on just this window to make it more aerodynamically efficient. You'll notice that most windows have a, have a, have a ledge um, you know, in from the door that's, you know, twice as big as this. And if the glass rolls all the way up to the top, you've got a big lip up here that's going to catch the air as it goes over the top of the vehicle, which is very crucial for us. But uh, by moving this lip down and by smoothing this transition out a lot, we have a much, much more aerodynamic window set in our door. And that's all made possible by the, by the modern computational fluid dynamics tools that we have to work with.
most vehicles today have big grills that draw in air through radiators and then expunge the air somewhere else in the vehicle. That's just unacceptable from an aerodynamics uh, you know, first principles point of view. So when we started thinking about how do we cool our HVAC system, how do we cool our electronics, you know, putting in a radiator with a big flow through airstream just wasn't a thing. So we've adopted a skin cooling method that really we make the surface of the vehicle, the radiator. So as air travels over the vehicle at speed or at rest, that's how we get heat out of the vehicle. So it's very unique. You know, our in-skin cooling is something that nobody else is even really contemplating because you have to have a very low energy use vehicle to take advantage of it. The higher the energy use, if you're trying to make a, uh, an, an electric pickup truck and you're burning six or 700 watt hours per mile, then your electronics are getting really hot because there's not any, you know, 99% efficient, electroni efficient electronics. So your inverter's producing heat, your charger's producing heat when you charge it. You know, so many things in the vehicle, the DC to DC is producing heat. What do you do with that heat? If it's such a big vehicle, you have to blow air through a radiator to get that heat out. But because we're using so little energy per mile, um, you know, we're able to actually get rid of the heat through the skin and still have an effective cooling solution for everything yeah, that we if, need to do. If you look at the traditional tier ones, you know, think of the companies that make the fans, the fan clutches, the radiators, the hoses, all of those things. Uh, all of that, virtually all of that goes away here because we're, we're able to reject the heat through the skin without having to flow the air through anything. So it, it's simpler, it's lighter, it's cheaper. We can also take heat in in the winter. So in the winter, your roof's gonna be warm, the rest of your vehicle might be cold. Um, you know, so we can take heat from surfaces on the skin and move that heat elsewhere in the vehicle too, which is kind of cool. Okay, so it's a super efficient vehicle. The reason it looks like that and the reason that it's built that way is purely for efficiency. Um, so the ne number two is safety. So we want a car that's very safe. Now you would think that because it's such a light and small vehicle that it'd be very unsafe, but because of the way that it's made and it's kind of a dome shape, it doesn't have sharp edges. It's um, very strong because it has arches everywhere and it's made of this composite material that absorbs energy and then um, pushes in, collapses and then springs back. So two things make a vehicle safe um, in, in collisions is a strength of the passenger compartment so that there's no intrusion into the comp passenger compartment and the ability to absorb energy. And um, it, it does two of both of those things and I'll let them explain. We've got six or seven different scenarios that we have to look at. We've got front side rollover, rear, rear three quarter, front three quarter. Um, and in every scenario, um, the vehicle is designed to absorb the impact in a specific way. Um, and again, because of composites, um, like with metal, you can't tailor metal specifically down to like, the, well, you can get down to the grain structure, but not really. Like you can get down to wall thicknesses and ribs, that kind of stuff. With composites, you can literally place the fiber specifically where you want to see the loads transmitted to. Um, and you can you can tailor it to flex in one direction or not another. You can do all sorts of things with it. Um, so the body is designed to absorb impact uh, in every scenario that we can imagine, um, and then and then like we say, return back to its original form, um, which is which is massive. Uh, the front of the vehicle has um, a, a metal subframe, so we have the uh, composite tub stops at the firewall. There's a metal subframe in front. That whole thing is designed to collapse, absorb energy, and before it gets to the button to the passenger compartment. Um, and in a normal 45 mile an hour collision, the passenger compartment shouldn't get damaged at all. Like that should be completely saveable for the next, um, just change the front end. Um, side impact is great. Rollover, like I say, we're at like six times vehicle weight on the last vehicle test we did. Um, so rollover, I think the vehicle probably will just, it won't do anything. Um, so anyway, we're excited to test this new body structure. We've improved it a lot over the last vehicle. Um, there's uh, more roof structure. We've eliminated some metal that we had in the very first car that we didn't like, so we got rid of that. Um, and uh, we've got full composite now, and pretty soon we're gonna be building the jig again and crushing the things and um, seeing what kind of results we get this time. But um, if it's anything like the first car again, it's gonna be record setting uh, performance. Okay, and then number three, so it's very safe. Number three is, um, it's the first solar powered car, or it's one of the first solar powered cars. You know, people have been said, say it for a long time, you know, why don't we just put solar panels on electric cars? And that intuitively makes sense. But the problem is that solar panels are very, um, so, solar energy is very um, 
energy poor. It's not very energy dense. So you don't get that much energy from solar panels on a car. And so if you put solar panels on, you know, like a Tesla Model S, you probably would get, you know, maybe 10 miles of range a day out of it, which is probably not that useful. Um, but because this is so efficient, you get um, a lot of um, up to 45 miles per day in optimal conditions. So you'll see that there's solar panels here on the roof and then on the back, a little bit here in the corners. There's some solar panels on the uh, dash deck and solar panels in the front. So there's various options. You can get all the solar panels or a few of the solar panels. But basically, um, in a sunny uh, location, and I live in Southern California, so it's very sunny, um, and I, I probably would never have to charge this thing. Um, but you, there is option, actually an option to charge it, but you can get up to 45 miles per day of solar um, driving. So that's, that's amazing. Then th there's an all-wheel drive option. So they can get power to all three wheels. The reason that's kind of interesting to me is because I think this would be a great kind of uh, stealth camping vehicle or um, a vehicle you can take into the fire roads in the mountains. I have a lot of fire roads in the mountains that are not really off-road, but they're a little rough and it requires kind of a higher ground clearance and all-wheel drive would be helpful. This thing has a ground clearance of nine inches, which is as good as many SUVs and more than the Jeep Wrangler actually. And you can take the wheel covers off so that these things don't hit. And they have a little tent option that you can buy, but it's pretty easy to put a little tent here. But with the amount of solar um, energy you can get, you know, it'd be a, a great camping vehicle, solo camping or camping with two people. And that's one of the things that really interests me about it. And so the all-wheel drive option will help in ice and snow and let you go off-road a little bit. All right, so the design. Obviously, this design is um, very polarizing. It is, um, you're definitely going to stand out. You're not going to, people are going to notice if, if you drive this car. So that can be either a good thing or a bad thing. Um, to me, I think it's a good thing. I mean, people ask questions and I can kind of tell them about the car and how, how environmentally friendly it is, how efficient it is, and how I think the more people that drive a car that's small and like this, the better it will be for everyone. They will have cleaner air, you know, um, less pollution. So I think it's good. And I think that leads to conversations where, um, you know, you can kind of uh, explain the car to people. Um, but if you don't want to stand out, then this is probably not the car for you because uh, this the car definitely stands out. I mean, it sticks out like a sore thumb, basically. But the reason it looks like this, as um, Chris Anthony uh, explained, is because um, it was designed not for aesthetics. The car, they don't, they didn't really care what it looked like. They just wanted the car to be as efficient as possible. And um, when you want to make a car as efficient as possible, it becomes lightweight, made with composite structures. It becomes three wheels to reduce rolling resistance. And it has this shape because it's the most aerodynamic shape. All right, so value. It, the thing starts at $25,000 before um, government incentives. Um, current government incentives are 10%, so you get about $2,500 off. Um, but uh, I think they are saying that they are trying to push for um, bigger incentives for solar-powered cars and very efficient cars. They may or may not get get that. But anyway, um, twenty, you know, low twenties for a composite structure, hyper-efficient car that's solar-powered and has a 250-mile range to start and goes up to a thousand-mile range with a higher price. Obviously, that I think is a very good value for the car. And then lastly, performance, um, the, the, you know, the reverse tadpole trike design is very stable. Maneuverability is good. Um, it brakes fast. It accelerates fast because it's very lightweight. Um, zero to 60 acceleration in the all wheel drive model is, uh, supposed to be 3.5 seconds, which is, you know, it's not, um, Tesla model S plaid edition fast, but that is plenty fast and it should be, uh, very lively to drive. That really excited me was the handling of the Aptera in this very early alpha stage. 
Now the stability is great under high speed stressful situations. The vehicle is very balanced and feels comfortable to drive. And we know that by adding a sway bar and tuning the suspension more, things are only gonna get better. Our acceleration test went very well. The Aptera is brisk under acceleration and it's pretty exciting to drive. We know that working with our partners in Slovenia at Alafe, the motor tuning will only get better and we'll see acceleration times increase as we bring in our own battery technologies too. Okay, so um, I hope you guys got a good feeling for the reasons that I placed an order for an Aptera. If these things seem attractive to you and you wanna place an order for an Aptera, please use the link below in the description that gives you $30 off the reservation fee and it gives me a little discount off of my Aptera. Um, but um, if you uh, have already ordered an Aptera, please comment below and tell us why you chose the Aptera. But I think there's several reasons to believe that this is one of the, it's a groundbreaking car and I'm excited to get my hands on it. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to help this channel grow. Thank you.